Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will see the Cleis algorithm which is used to find the length of union of segments of line. So let us get started. In this first example, you can see that I have drawn three line segments. One is starting from 2 to 6, another one from 5 to 8 and the last one from 9 to 12. By the way, these three line segments will be present in just a single line because this is a 1D diagram. But I have drawn it in a 2D so that you can better understand these line segments by looking at it separately. So what will be the maximum length of continuous line which we can make using these three segments? You can see that if we join this 2 6 with 5 8 then the length will be 2 to 8 because we can only move a line segment either up or down not in the left hand side or on the right hand side okay. So the maximum length which can be found is 2 to 8 which is 6 because there is a gap between this 8 and 9. So these cannot be joined and by the way this 9 to 12 is only length 3 so 6 is the maximum length of the line which can be made using these 3 segments. So answer is 6. In the second example you can see that there is a gap between the first line and the third line segment. So they both can be joined if we move this line segment up. So using these 3 line segments the maximum length of a line which can be formed is from 2 to 10. And so the maximum line segment length will be equals to 2 to 10 which is 8. So I hope you understood the question now. We will use a very specific method to solve this problem. There can be other methods as well. So let us take an example and understand the solution. I have taken 3 line segments and the points are denoted by 2, 5, 4, 8, 9, 12 where 2 is the starting point of the line segment and 5 is the ending point of the line segment as you can see in the diagram. Now in order to solve this, we will just divide these points into two parts and we will take these separately. So this 2, 5, 4, 8, 9, 12 will be taken separately by me. I will divide the starting as well as the ending points. And I will denote the starting point with false and ending point with true value. So these are basically the boolean values. So in C++ STL, you can take it by using pair or if you don't use STL then you will take a 2D array where you will have number of line segments into 2 as the number of rows this will be your number of rows and 2 number of columns so the first column will denote the starting or the ending point value and the second column will denote whether the given value is the starting or the ending point value so here you can see that 2 is a coordinate point and f denotes that it is a starting point of a line segment this 5 denotes a coordinate point and this t that is true denotes that it is the ending point of a line segment so like this we will write all these points so you can see that i have written 2 comma f 5 comma t denoting the first line 4 comma f 8 comma t denoting the second line segment and so on so in this way I will write all these line segments and then I will sort it. So I will sort it in ascending order. So when we sort it the value comes out to be this. Now there is a condition that is a sorting condition if two values matches that is if your line segment starts like this okay. So one another line will start at 5 and end at some point. So when we have a line segment ending at a point and line segment starting at a point then the one which is starting will have a higher priority so in this example you can see that from 2 to 5 and 5 to 8 if we sort it then it will be 2 comma f for this one 5 comma f for this one then we have 5 comma t so this will come as third position so this is a case for equality now once you have understood how to sort it so let us now solve it in order to get the length of longest line segment which is continuous. So I will start from this first point. I will take two variables result and counter. Result will be storing the maximum length of the line segment ok. And this is our counter value. So whenever counter is 0 then we won't change the result. And if counter is greater than 0 then we will add the values to result. So let us process it so that you will understand it. In the first attempt our counter value is 0 so we will not do anything to result. So before moving on to the next value we will increment the counter by 1 and counter will only be incremented if it is a starting point. If the current point is a starting point. Here the current point is denoting false and so we can say that it is a starting point. F was for starting point and T was for ending point 
so this is a starting point so we will increment the counter now we move on to the next value which is 4 comma f now in this case you can see that counter is already 1 which is greater than 0 we will add the current value minus the previous value so it will be 4 minus 2 which will be 2 so 2 will be added to result and it will come out to be 2 this counter will be incremented by 1 since it is a false that is it is a starting index of a line segment we will move on to the third value so it is 5 comma t now counter value is already greater than 0 so we will add it to our result so result will be current value 5 minus previous value 4 so it will be 1 so 1 will be added to 2 and it will become 3 now since it is true this indicates that 5 is the ending point of a line segment so we will decrement this counter value by 1 so counter is now 1 we will move on to the next point which is 8 comma t now counter value is greater than 0 which is 1 so we will add the value to result value added will be current value 8 minus previous value 5 so it will be 3 so 3 will be added to current value 3 it will be 6 now now since this is the ending point of a line segment this is 8 this is denoted by true so we will decrement this counter value and it will become 0 now as soon as this counter hits 0 this indicates that there will be a gap on the next attempt okay so you can see that when we move right of this 8 then there is a gap of length 1 year there is a gap so whenever the counter hits 0 that means there will be a discontinuity on the right hand side so we will take a max length variable which will be keeping track of the maximum length of the continuous line so as soon as this counter hits 0 we will store the value in our max length the result value in max length and make the result as 0 okay because there will be discontinuity and after discontinuity when we start with this point 9 then the result will again be recounted from 0 okay so this is the logic behind it now we reach 9 comma f so counter value is 0 so we don't add anything to result now since this is the starting point of a line segment so we will increment the counter value it becomes 1 now we move on to the next point it is 12 comma t now since counter value is greater than 0 so we will add the result so result will be current value 12 minus previous value 9 which will be 3 so we will add 3 to the result it will be 0 plus 3 equals to 3 so counter will be decremented by one value it will become 0 since you can see that this is t so this is the ending point of a line segment now as soon as counter hits 0 we will compare the current value of result with the current value of max length so you can see that the max length value is 6 already and we are trying to store 3 here so actually we wanted to find the maximum length of the line segment which will be continuous we already found a line which is of length 6 so why will we store this 3 again so we will just compare it and see if the current value which is the result value is greater than the max length then only we will update the max length otherwise we won't do anything so in this way you can find the maximum length of a line which can be formed by the combination of these line segments and this line should be continuous as well so what is the time complexity of this algorithm actually what we were doing is we were taking this bunch of points we were dividing it into two parts and then we were sorting it after sorting we were just traversing through all the points only once so the time complexity will be order of n log n for sorting this is for sorting and that will be added with we are traversing only once so it will be n for traversing so this is the total time complexity and these number of points will be equals to 2n since for n line segment each one will be having a starting and the ending point so we will have 2n total number of points so this n is actually 2n all the steps along with the code will be present in the description below so do check it out if you have any type of doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you in our next video thank you